All right, hello everyone. So for today, what I'm gonna do is I'm going to diagnose a coolant leak with a pressure tester. So we have a Jeep Wrangler here that has a coolant leak. The customer is complaining of they're getting a bit of coolant on their driveway. So one of the first things we need to look at first is we need to look at what the system's actually pressurized to. And we go off of our radiator cap to find that out. So our radiator cap is rated for 18 PSI. Um, what that indicates is that the pressure that this will hold the cooling system under is going to be 18 PSI to increase the boiling point of the water. So for every one PSI that the cooling system is under pressure, it increases the uh, coolant boiling point by three degrees. So this will have an exponential effect on preventing the cooling system from boiling over. So what we wanna do is we wanna make sure that we don't exceed that 18 PSI, or we possibly could create a leak that, where there wasn't one. So to actually pressure test it, we're going to use a pressure tester. So this is a pretty extensive pressure testing uh, adapter and toolkit. We have our pressure tester here, plus our adapters, and we also have a vacuum bleeder as well. So we have a couple different adapters that we can choose from. What you wanna line up with is you wanna look at what the radiator cap is. So this is a pretty standard domestic radiator cap with just the two tangs. Um, but if you had a European or uh, Asian market car that had a thread on style um, radiator cap, you would use one of these. So. We're gonna go with our one adapter right here. Now, one of the things to note before you start to do these, make sure the two uh, O-rings are right there. Uh, potentially some of these aftermarket radiators with these plastic tanks, they don't seal up the best with uh, all of these adapters. So we wanna make sure we're locked on. We also wanna make sure, and I already made sure to do this, that there is some coolant in the system. Um, if there's no coolant in the system, all we're gonna be doing is compressing the air um, and we won't get a really accurate reading. So we wanna make sure we fill up the radiator most of the way. Um, that way we can actually compress some cooling and, and pressurize the system. So we're going to get our pressure gauge. And again, we're gonna to try to not to exceed our 18 PSI on the gauge. So we'll hit our quick release. and we'll pressurize the system. So I can't quite get it to 18 PSI, it's starting to bleed down. So we'll leave it right there at 16, because um, that's where the system's kind of equalizing out. So what we can do is we can actually inspect the vehicle now. So we'll leave this up here and we know we have pressure by looking at the upper radiator hose. Our upper radiator hose is, um, is expanded, meaning that there is some pressure in the system. So we're gonna to wanna to look at the radiator tanks, um, the radiator hoses, any of the heater hose, um, any of the uh, other coolers that have coolant that run through them. So this particular vehicle does have a oil cooler in the middle here that can have coolant running through it. Uh, these heater hoses and anything along those lines. So what we'll probably do right now is you usually can get a better view of where the coolant leak's coming from when we have the vehicle up in the air. So I'm gonna lift the vehicle up and we'll inspect it from there. All right, so with the vehicle up in the air, we can start to inspect for coolant leaks. So what we're gonna be looking at is we're gonna be looking at anywhere that there's some hoses, um, anywhere that's a known common issue, um, freeze plugs, core plugs, uh, those, those coolers for the engine oil cooler, uh, upper and lower radiator hose and radiator hose alike. Um, so what we kind of have right now with it under pressure, we kind of have a little bit of two leaks. So. Um, if you can look, it's going to be kind of hard for me to get the camera up there, but the bottom of this tank is a bit crusty, indicating that there is some coolant coming down from it. Um, the nice thing with the uh, red coolant is they tend to dye it a little bit, um, the component. Uh, we also have, too, a little bit of moisture forming on this corner edge where there's actually fresh water coming out where it's been, where the, uh, the water that I added to the system is leaking out of. Um, so from here, we're, we're pretty much able to diagnose that this is probably gonna be a leaking radiator. Um, we also wanna look at, make sure the front of the radiator um, and any other uh, componentry that goes along with it isn't leaking as well. Uh, we'll go back up top and double check the engine oil cooler and stuff like that. And then we'll also double check by uh, pressure testing the uh, radiator cap to make sure that's not the source of the leak. All right, so with the vehicle back down on the ground and the vehicle still under pressure, um, I was able to inspect some other components. There is a coolant leak from the engine oil cooler, which is on the oil filter adapter. It's a aluminum cooler that is bolted to a plastic adapter. Uh, what can happen is they expand and contract at different rates, just like the radiator tanks, and uh, it, it causes a warp. 
creating a coolant leak. So that is something that we'll have to address. We'll have to remove the intake manifold to address that further to make sure that there's not the hose that goes in the back feeding it or O-rings that go down into the block. So with this vehicle sitting for about five, 10 minutes while we lifted it up and did the inspection and also inspected the top end, we've lost a considerable amount of PSI. So we did have the system set at about 16 PSI. Remember our maximum PSI for the system was 18 PSI. Um, because we're down to about 12, so we've lost four PSI in about five minutes, that's enough of a pressure loss to indicate that there is a leak. And we found the radiator leaking as well as our oil filter adapter. Usually the rule of thumb is if the vehicle sits for about 10 to 20 minutes under pressure, it shouldn't lose any more than about a PSI. That's usually a pretty um, sealed system. These tools and the adapter and everything does leak. Um, so this is the, the pressure drop is an indication that we do have a continuum of a coolant leak. So there's one last thing we need to pressure test before we can give the quote off to the customer and that is actually pressure testing our radiator cap. It's at 18 PSI. What can happen with these is the spring can fatigue, causing the system to uh, pressure off the coolant pressure into the overflow bottle prematurely. You can also have these two O-rings that are just you know simple rubber O-rings rip as well. So a pressure test will be able to tell if uh, these are, are an issue as well. So what we'll have to do is we'll have to bleed down the system. So this pressure tester has a bleed off valve right here that will bleed down so that it's safe to remove. The coolant leaking out of that is normal. When you put fluid under pressure, it will expand. So we're down to zero PSI. We can remove the pressure adapter. And now we can find the correct adapter for our radiator cap. So what we have here is we have the correct adapter to go on to the radiator cap pressure tester. So what we're going to do is we're gonna go grab our radiator cap and put that on to where the tangs are lining up and fully sealed on both ends. And then we can pressurize this to 18 PSI. So we'll put our pressure gauge on. And remember this is an 18 PSI max cap. So we can't really get past 15 PSI. So that's good and bad. So the good thing is, is we're not losing pressure immediately. Uh, the bad thing is, is we're not achieving that maximum pressure that that cap is rated to. Um, as we're sitting here talking, it's bleeding down. We're down to about 14 PSI. So this would be a cap that I would replace normally because it's not reading the um, pressure that we're, we're asking for as well as uh, it's bleeding down slowly. So. What we would do to fix this vehicle is we would replace the radiator, investigate the coolant leak under the intake manifold as well as a radiator cap. Um, radiator caps typically don't come with new radiators when you replace them. So it's always a good idea to check it because these are only a couple bucks and it's not worth having the car come back for an, uh, it overheating or leaking more coolant when something simple that can be replaced at the same time. Um, and again, this cap is bleeding down. So now we're down to about 13 PSI um, with me rambling on. So what we'll do now is we'll get the quote. So we'll get a parts quote off to the customer and see if we can get this vehicle repaired. I appreciate you taking the time to watch the video. I uh, hope to see you in the next one.